Hello everybody and welcome to this Q&A. It was originally going to be part of the last painting log of 2020, but um, you asked way too many questions, so I decided to spin it off into its own video and that's what you're watching now. Uh, I couldn't answer every question because there was like 150 of them or something. Uh, so I've picked 20 questions which I shall now answer. Um, in the background I'll put something interesting. I don't know, I'll put some uh, models spinning, like there are in the painting log, uh, except some of them will be ones that you won't have seen before, so that'll be fun, won't it? Okay, first question from Janola. What's your favourite model you painted this year, and which one is your least favourite? Well, my favourite model I painted this year would probably be the Rogue Trader Lamenta with a Shuriken Catapult. I don't know why exactly, I just really like that model, and I'm really happy with my paint job on it. I think because it's such a archetypically hard paint scheme to pull off with the checks and the yellow, and I kind of did it. So yeah, um, I also it's, you know, a goofy rogue trader model, and I just love them. My least favorite one is the Epic Rhino I painted. Uh, because I did that with contrast paints and it left it with a kind of mottled look to it and eh, I just wasn't into how it looked, especially when you get like really up close to it, it's really rough. Um, but it was a test to see if you could use contrast on those kind of things, so you know, and it only took me like next to no time to do, so it's not really a big loss. Dalor Boss asked, how tedious does it get painting grots for almost a year? Honestly, it doesn't. I, I, I just kind of enjoy painting grots, I guess. Uh, I mean, I've painted 70 just regular grots, not counting um, like gun crew or special characters or anything. And yeah, I could I could paint a bunch more and be perfectly happy. I don't know why, I just don't really get burnt out painting them for whatever reason. Mr. Muffinman asked, why does your Grot Rebellion army use winter-themed bases? Is it some sort of Russia reference? Not really. Um, I, the starting point of the army was that I got the 2019 uh, Christmas Red Gobbo and I converted him to be not Christmas. Um, and when I did that, it, it, um, it made sense because he's instilling kind of winter clothing to carry on with the sort of winter theme on his base and everything. And so when I decided to expand that to a full Grot Rebellion, I just used the same basing thing. That's all it really is. And like, I do kind of like that I did that uh, in one way, because it means that it is a more... It looks different to a lot of Grot Rebellion things, because you won't often see them on snow bases. Although I will admit, sometimes I do kind of regret that I didn't go for the classic kind of sandy base. But hey, it makes them stand out, so that's fun. Now I've got a related question from W. Husk. How do you do your snowy bases? I maybe want to copy them. Also, do you have general advice for someone who's never actually done a base before? So the way that I do the bases is that they're covered in sterling battle mire, and then once that's dried, I dry brush it with steel legion drab. And then over that, I put bits of Valhalla and Blizzard on it for the actual snow. Uh, there's all, I also put rocks and little um, the little grass tuft things you can buy. I, I put some of those on as well, just to kind of differentiate it. Uh, but that's all it really is. Um, as for advice for someone who's never done a base before, uh, the best advice I can really give is to start simple and just keep adding to your kind of skill set. So a good place to start is like the um, Citadel Technical stuff, your your Sterling Battle Myers, your Martian Iron Earths, things like that, um, that are designed just to give you a complete texture for a base. And it's quite simple to put on, and just with a dry brush over that, you'd be surprised how much depth that can give. And then over time, you just add more to that. So, you know, say, start adding rocks to bases, or adding, you know, a few skulls, or, um, a, a, you know, maybe adding snow, or, or adding tufts of grass. And you'll find that over time, you, you start to have a bit more, you've, you, you've, you've started making these more elaborate bases, and yeah, uh, and it can be quite fun. Just, just don't go nuts on every single um, model's base, because if you want to make a horde army like that, you'll spend half your time building a base, and that gets very frustrating. Um, save the really elaborate ones for your characters or whatever. Tech Priest of Mars asks, what are your top five models for your Grot army? Also, why are Skinks so objectively amazing? Well, Skinks are objectively amazing because they are small blue babies whom I love. And my top five models for my Grot army, 
Um, I don't know. Um, my runt bot is probably my favorite one because that's like mostly scratch built. Uh, I don't get to use it very often because it's not actually as useful as I hoped. I really like my Grot Cutter because getting a Gorkamorka model into my army was something I wanted to do. I really like my Death Copter that I built. And um, I guess there's also the Communication Scrot. I was, I re I'm really happy with how he came out. And this particular Grot. Um, yeah, uh, if you ask me tomorrow, I will probably give you a different five. But right now, that's my top five. Eric Warhammer asked, after your Grot Rebellion army is done, what army slash project are you going to build and or paint next? Uh, my next thing, as I mentioned in the last painting log, is a Age of Sigmar Seraphon army, which I've already started building uh, and I've painted one squad of. Nebelfear asks, have you ever scrapped an army entirely? Well, the closest that I've done to that is that I did start building a Renegade Guard army back in late 5th edition. It was going to be a Cornate Guard. I'll, I'll pop a few of them on screen now. Um, I got round to painting a handful of them. I'd converted up a full squad and a squad of Rough Riders. Um, but then 6th edition rolled around and the sort of ta the sort of build I wanted to go with, which was going to be a sort of infantry heavy blob army, just didn't work as well. And I just realised that... I was spending far too long on individual models and trying to do a horde army like that would actually kill me. So I ended up just not doing it. I, I still have all the models and maybe I'll do something with them one day, like maybe make a kill team or something. But um, but yeah, for now, for now they are like my, the closest thing I have to like a completely abandoned project. Miles Byrne asked, when do you think we'll get to see your full Argent Wardens army? Well, now, because I'm putting them on screen. Yeah. Um, this is the the complete thing, so it's got all the stuff that isn't painted yet. There's a fair bit there. Uh, I can't remember how much there is in points. It's over 3,000 points, I think. Although a lot of that is in HQ choices, because I apparently just have a ton of them. And I just enjoy making new and interesting ones. So, yeah. I uh, haven't had a chance to play with them in ninth yet, so I have no idea if they're any good. Uh, so that'll be fun to find out, won't it? Warboss Gaming asked... What was the first mini you ever painted? I think some of the first models I ever painted were some of the plastic Chaos Marines that were released in 2nd edition. Um, I don't have any of them left. Well, I, I do have one, uh, but I repainted that a few years back, uh, so it wouldn't look as terrible because it did look quite bad. Um, however, here's some of the oldest models that I painted that I still have, which would have been painted within the first few months of me learning to paint as far as I'm aware. Uh, but this was back in the late 90s, so um, it's, it's a while ago. Uh, the two models that aren't GW there are from a game called Dark World, which is a board game that had kind of like roleplay elements. Uh, I, I don't remember much about the actual game because I don't know if I ever got a chance to play a full game of it because it's kind of complicated. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, but I still have some of the minis from it, so that's fun. Aperture PR asked... What does your painting setup look like? Do you have a dedicated space? Also, how do you store your painted minis? Um, the answers there are no, no, and however I can. Uh, we have quite a small flat, and I literally just paint at the coffee table with like just a bit of newspaper down, <laughs> some kitchen towel, and I just make do. That that's all it is. I don't have I don't have enough room to have like a dedicated space, and. Um, the minis are stored, some of them are on shelves, some of them are in drawers, some of them are stored away in boxes. It's just however I can. <laughs> it's um, it, it's a situation that is getting worse and worse the more miniatures that we have. I think we're just going to have to move to a bigger flat. I think that's the only answer at this point. Angus Husbands asked, where do you get the bits from for your conversions? Uh, the simple answer is, uh, I, I buy kits. <laughs> um, I, I've just been playing for a while, like, I, I think um, getting back into the game uh, was about a decade ago, and so over that time I've collected multiple armies and I've ended up with just a lot of spare parts, and um, I, yeah, I, I, I just use them wherever I can, and uh, I don't throw stuff away if I can help it, 
So um, yeah, that's that, that's all it really is. Occasionally, admittedly, I will like if I haven't got a specific part I need, I will just go and get them off eBay or a Bits website or what have you. But for the most part, it's just what I've got lying around, honestly. Andy asked, "Is there something you would never want to paint for any reason?" Yeah, a lot of historical stuff I would not feel comfortable painting, to be perfectly honest, because most historical wars are populated by bastards. Um, and especially, like, World War II stuff, yeah, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to paint Nazis. Um, that's no shade on people that do collect historical stuff, like, I don't think there's anything, like, inherently bad about it or anything, but just me personally, I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I prefer the fascists that I paint to be fictional ones, um, but that's, that's, again, that's just me, that's just how I feel about it. T75044 asked, which brand of brushes do you use for the freehand work? Um, pretty much all the freehand work that I have done in the last few years has been done just with Games Workshop brushes. This is something that is a reoccurring theme for me. I go the path of least resistance nearly all the time. Um, so yeah, I, I just use the Games Workshop brushes because they're the easiest ones for me to physically go and pick up in person. Uh, they're not the best, but they are good enough. And I guess that's all you can really say. That's my box quote. Games Workshop, you can put that on your brushes. Not the best, but good enough. Daniel Stevens asked, I absolutely love your painting style and choice of colour, especially for the Eldar. Have you ever considered doing a couple of painting tutorials? Uh, this is something that I've been asked quite a few times, and the short answer is I sort of have. Um, there's a couple of videos over on the main Sniper Web channel that do have a sort of painting tutorial -y kind of aspect about them. Um, but I don't like to do that stuff super often because it's sort of, I don't know, I, I don't find it particularly fun to do, so um, yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> Um, it kind of takes the fun out of painting for me, honestly, so yeah. Although, since you mentioned my Eldar, I should probably point out that those are just based on one of the old GW tutorial videos, so thank Duncan for that one. Schlabalax asked, Completely unrelated to 40k, but do you listen to folk punk? If so, what are your thoughts on Pat the Bunny? If you don't listen to folk punk, I highly recommend the album Crustfall by Days and Days. The answer is yes. Um, the only Pat the Bunny stuff I'm really familiar with is his Wingnut Dishwashers Union stuff, but uh, I really like that. It's very rough around the edges, but I think that really lends to its charm. And yeah, Days and Days are really good. Um, I, I really like them. I think the best way to describe them to someone who hasn't heard them is their what would happen if a crust punk band decided to play folk music. Uh, like with a washboard and everything. Um, they're pretty great. I, I really like them. Ruben K. Cheng Ong asked, Did you use a combination of contrast and regular paint to speed paint your models? E.g. contrast paint for the base coat and regular paint for the details. Generally, no. I'll just use regular paints rather than contrast. Although I will use contrast for certain things because it's just really good at it. Like, for example, if I want to paint white and I want it to be like a clean white, I'll use Apothecary White, um, the contrast paint, uh, because that just gives a really nice kind of blue-grey kind of tone to it that's hard to achieve um, any other way. Um, but apart from things like that, um, I don't use it that much, honestly. Quincy asked... How do you find the inspiration to paint so much? Do you prepare lots of models and sit down and paint them one by one, or do you prepare slash prime and paint as you go? Generally, I'll prepare models in little batches, uh, whether that be like a full squad or if it'll be a bunch of miscellaneous models. So, like, like say if I'm uh, making a bunch of Rogue Trader stuff at the time and a lot of it may not be stuff that I'm ever going to use in a game, it's just stuff to paint. I'll often like get all those prepared for painting at the same time so I can kind of prime them all in one go and then I'll do those kind of one, one by one and if it's a squad I, I try and batch paint these days um, just because I, I, I think it's a lot easier to finish a squad if you batch paint them than painting them individually because it's really easy to like just paint one then get bored of painting that kind of squad and then never paint the rest of the squad whereas if you batch paint them at least the whole squad is up to the same level uh, whenever, wherever you finish off doing them. So, I don't know. I, I find it a bit easy to do like that. 
As for how I find the inspiration to paint so much, well for me it's less about finding inspiration to do it and more about just making painting being a part of your routine. Um, like this series is kind of part of that. It, me it meant that I needed to paint each month because previously, like before I started doing this series, um, it was not uncommon for me to just not paint anything for like six, nine months, like just at a time. And then I'll paint like a model and then not do anything again for like another six months. That was very common for me. Um, and so when I, when I got back into painting again um, with some regularity, I, I, I just, that's why I made this series, because I, I was like, I want to keep this up, I want to get through my backlog. Or at the very least, I just want to paint more, I want to get better at painting, and I want to, I, I want to like, have fully painted armies, because it's just really cool to have a fully painted army. I mean, I very rarely achieve that because I buy something new and then that's not painted, and uh, you know how it is. Um, so, yeah, all, all I can really advise is if you can find some way to have a regular schedule um, where you paint. Personally, something that I found really useful was Hobby Streaks on Twitter, which is where you take a photo of what you've done each day and just try and see how many days in a row you can keep it going. It doesn't have to be much, it can just be a single coat of paint or what, what have you, but um, I, I find that doing that really makes it into a habit of that, okay, each day, like maybe, maybe when I wake up, uh, whilst I'm sort of like, I'll have my breakfast, whilst I'm watching something on TV in the morning, I'll just do a little bit of painting each morning, or maybe I'll do it at night, depending on how I'm feeling. Um, but making it into that part of the routine um, means that you get a lot more done and it stops being an event for you to paint. It stops it from being something where you have to like think about it and you're like, ooh, ooh, I'd like to do some painting, but ooh, I haven't got the time. And it becomes more, ooh, I haven't done my painting today. Um, and, and sort of making it into that routine, I, I found really, really helpful. And I know not everyone has the luxury that I do of having that enough time each day to do something like that. Um, but even if you just say, oh, I'm going to do a bit of painting every Saturday or something like that, and you just make it into a consistent thing, I personally find that really helpful. Archer Online asked, how do you paint your darker skin tones? There's a serious lack of guides on how to paint non-salamander black skin. A really simple recipe I found for darker skin is to use Monfang Brown as a base and then get some Nuln Oil and wash into the recesses and then mix a little bit of Kislev Flesh in with some Monfang Brown to create a highlight and sort of get that on like, you know, the nose and like the, the cheekbones and stuff just to give a little bit of depth to it. And yeah, um, that's a, a really quick and simple um, darker skin tone. Yeah. Thomas Saxon asked, what made you get into YouTube? In particular, what made you do these very good and very inspiring personal performance painting videos? Um, well, uh, thank you for one. <laughs> As to how I got into YouTube, uh, well, the short answer is, is that I've been making stuff to put online for other people's amusement since about 2003. Uh, so making YouTube videos seems like it was an inevitability, you know, eventually. Originally, uh, my wife Snipe and I uh, made like Gary's Mod videos. Uh, they were terrible. Uh, they're not online anymore. I, I am very thankful for that fact. Um, but uh, we eventually made a channel which was like a Let's Play channel, which is the Snipe and Wib channel, uh, which eventually sort of morphed into doing other things as well. And these days we mostly do reviews of old Games Workshop books and games and, and stuff. Um, so basically doing that has meant that I've got very used to working in video format. So when I wanted to keep track of what I was painting, video seemed like the natural um, sort of way to do that. Um, and then, yeah, uh, and, and here we are, I guess. <laughs> and finally, Poga asked... I guess I'm curious to how many unpainted models you have, since the point of this series is to shame you into painting your miniatures. That is a very interesting question, and one that I too would like to know the answer to. I do not know. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of the models that I've got are sort of scattered around um, the flat wherever they can be stored. Um, so I don't have like one dedicated area where it's like, these are the models that I have not painted yet. All I can say is it's a lot, but probably not as much as you expect. 
Okay, that was the last question. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope this video wasn't too unbearably long, and if it was, then I hope you at least got something out of my unstructured rambling. Thank you so much to everyone who left me a question to answer. I'm just sorry that I wasn't able to answer all of them. So take care, and I'll see you next time.